The utility poles that line our communities stretch across the nation, supporting America's critical infrastructure, lighting our homes, and helping us stay connected. Phones, broadband, even Wi-Fi and mobile connections all rely on utility poles. So how do these poles impact the more than 14 million Americans who live in areas that still don't have internet access? First, we need a quick overview of how poles access works. Then, we'll show how that process can needlessly increase costs and cause avoidable delays, which have left too many Americans unconnected for too long. And finally, how a fast, fair pole attachment process will help. Access to utility poles. To reach unserved areas, a broadband provider usually extends their network by attaching cables to utility poles. But broadband providers typically don't own the poles, so first, they need to get access. That includes getting permission from the pole owner, getting permits, and engineering study. Make ready work, a term that includes all of the work done to make the pole ready for new attachments, like moving equipment or adding wires to secure it. And finally, paying ongoing rent to the pole owner to compensate them and cover the costs of maintenance and repairs. Getting access to utility poles sounds simple enough, but it often causes avoidable delays and increased costs. Why? Pole attachment procedures, laws, and regulations vary wildly and are hard to enforce. Sometimes, rules don't even exist. Even in best-case scenarios, it can take up to 10 months to resolve make-ready issues, which must be complete before build-out can begin. A dispute over just one pole can stop access for everyone down the line. And pole owners don't always adhere to set timelines. A missed deadline can delay internet service for months or even years, especially in rural areas where weather or crop seasons can limit building opportunities. In addition to causing delays, the pole attachment process can also be needlessly costly. Broadband providers should pay their fair share of costs to cover their new attachments. But some pole owners don't play by the rules or make up their own when none exist. They require broadband providers to pay the entire cost of replacing poles that haven't been maintained or that are well into or even beyond their useful life of 30 to 40 years. These disputes hurt rural areas most. Why? In urban settings, broadband providers can serve multiple homes per pole. But in rural locations, with fewer homes and businesses, it's the opposite. Broadband providers often need access to multiple poles to serve just one home. When the number of poles needed increases exponentially, so do the time and expense of the deployment project, especially when pole owners don't want to pay their fair share. In fact, make-ready costs can be as much as one-third of the total cost of a rural internet expansion project, money that could be better spent connecting more families to the internet. A fair, fast process for utility poles access, replacements, and dispute resolution would allow investments in rural internet service to reach more unserved homes and businesses faster. Unserved Americans should not be left behind because of outdated laws, or in some cases, no laws, governing access to critical infrastructure. It's time to modernize the utility polls processes, helping to bridge the digital divide by ensuring poll owners and broadband providers cooperate and each pays their fair share so that every American can finally have access to high-speed internet. Learn more at connectthefuture.com.